This is a piezoelectric buzzer. This is a Raspberry Pi with a couple of cables. And this is the song I taught it to play. Can you guess it? And this is the code I made to make it all work. The passive buzzer we just saw is connected to a ground and GP16. We're going to drive this buzzer using a technology called pulse width modulation. What it basically does is send a square wave at a specific frequency, and then the buzzer responds to that frequency. For this project, I'm using CircuitPython, which you can find at circuitpython.org. Simply go to Downloads, and grab the version for your Raspberry Pi Pico, or your Raspberry Pi Pico W. Once downloaded, simply hold down the boot select button on your Raspberry Pi Pico while plugging it into a USB connection and then drag the file over to the flash drive that appears subsequently. And that's it, you'll have CircuitPython installed. Because we're trying to reproduce a piece of music, we need to work out which frequency belongs to which note, something I've already done for you. If you head over to ckenthusiast.com, click on RPI Pico Projects and Musical Notes, you will receive a zip file. And inside that zip file will be a PY file. I simply double clicked on it and opened it in Thony. To make these notes easier to access, I've put them into a list and I've given each one of them a key associating with the note in question in different octaves. On the one side is the key you'll be referencing, so you can just easily make reference to notes. And on the other side is the frequency corresponding to that note. Next, I need to click on File and New, and we're going to create our main program. But before I do that, I need to go to Notes and make sure it is saved on my Raspberry Pi Pico. So if I save as and click on CircuitPython device, as you can see, Notes is already there, but this is how I would save it. In our new file, we then start to import the resources we need. So import, and we're going to type in uh, PWMIO. This will allow us to load our pulse width modulation input output library. Then we import board, and we import time. And finally, we import our notes library. So as you can see, import simply loads the local PY file from our local folder, or it will call something that's built into the firmware you've uploaded. The next thing we need to do is direct our WPM device to the appropriate pin. So I'm going to type in WPN there equals WPMIO. And we're going to have um, WPM out. Sorry, I mean PMW out. And we're going to give it some parameters. We're going to begin by using board to select our GP16 pin. So board dot GP16 will give us the correct output pin. Then we're going to add a duty cycle, which will allow us to hold a note. And we're going to set this to 3000. And then we're going to set variable and underscore frequency equals true. This allows us to change the frequency on the fly as we run our program. Next, we're going to create a new list called Song. And as you can imagine, this will hold all the notes of the song we wish to play. 
However, notes are not the only thing we need to keep track of. We also need to keep track of the timing of our notes as well. So we're actually going to be passing in two values. To retrieve the note we want to play, we're just going to go notes dot note, and then we're going to call it by key. So example, I'm going to key call C4, and I'm going to close that. And we've just called the frequency data from that library. And then I'm going to pass it a timing value. Then I'm going to go notes dot note, and we're just going to select D4 as well. And we're going to create a simple two note program. This can be in floats as well. So if I want to make this timing different, I can. And that's it. That's all you need to do for your song is work out the notes and the timings associated. The next thing we need to do is track exactly where in the song we are. So I'm just going to create a variable called song pause and I'm going to set it to zero. I'm also going to play, oh, sorry, I'm going to create another variable called note playing equals zero as well. This will just so we can track the note and you'll see why this is necessary in a moment. Next, we're going to create a loop. So while true should then loop the program indefinitely. And what we're now going to do is go pwm dot frequency. And then this is going to equal song and we're going to give it the position of our list. So song pause. So song pause is tracking where in the list we're actually reading from. Next, I'm going to add a simple print statement just so we can track the note we're currently playing. So position, and I'm going to give it a couple of curly braces and then dot format and note playing. Then we'll close that. Next, we're going to increase the value of song pause. So it's played note to zero. So we want it to move on now to the next note. And I'm just going to go plus equals and one. Then I'm going to do the same with note playing plus equals one. And you'll see why I have two separate values in a moment. The next thing we're going to do is type in time dot sleep and we're going to give it the next position in the list. This is why we've just increased song. It's so we can grab the next position going down. Otherwise, we'll be trying to feed in a very long time indeed, because we'll be trying to assign frequency to time. So we call our list song, and we're going to call song underscore pause, and we're going to close that and close that as well. So it's important to understand that per program cycle, we are calling from our list twice. We are calling once to set the frequency and a second time to set the duration that that frequency is held on the buzzer. Then once this has been done, we then increase the value of pause again. So when the program cycles next, it will collect the next note ready for playback. I want the song to actually repeat itself rather than just continue adding and going off the edge of the list. So for this, I'm going to create an if statement. If song pause is greater or equal to len song, then we need to go song pause equals zero and note playing equals zero. So we reset the program with this statement as soon as it goes beyond the length of the list we have assigned. Next, we need to save our program. So we're going to save it to our CircuitPython device, and I'm just going to call it music.py. And then I'm going to click on OK. Then I'm going to hit play and see if it works. As you can hear, it is indeed playing. 
So now we're in a position where we have a massive list of notes we can choose from. And we have a program that will play back those notes based on whatever you put into song. So what I'm going to do now is post in 60 or so notes that I previously worked out. Now you might notice an anomaly here. We have 1 and 0 0.01. This is because we have two identical notes right next to each other. And in order to distinguish them, I want to pause the program momentarily so it's not playing anything and then proceed to play the next note. That will then give you a beep beep sound rather than a beep sound. I will paste a copy of these notes into the description of the video so you can use them yourself. But let's give it a play and see how it works. So as you can see here, it's playing notes and it's playing the timings. and you can track the note it's playing on the position here. There's a couple of wrong notes in places that I'll let you have fun trying to fix yourself. The program then loops and it will basically play this song indefinitely. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed my rendition of the famous Star Wars opening theme. And I hope you've enjoyed learning how to code something. Um, I encourage you to have a go and check out my website at ckenthusiast.com for updated information, notes and that kind of thing. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and follow me.